since we made the last series, a very big thing has happened in my life, ladies and gentlemen, which is I have become a father. Uh, no, no. <laughs> we are not American. <laughs> There's no need for that. It's just my joy. It's millions of people have done it before me, <laughs> but which I don't mean had sex with my wife. <laughs> I have become a father. And, and when you become a dad for the first time, you learn quite a lot about the play centre. Honestly, it is play centre this, play centre that, play centre, play centre, play centre, play centre. Obviously, not everyone pronounces it that way. Um, <laughs> I think it's good to make things sound more fun whenever you possibly can. That's why, in my world, that's an, a Skeletor. Um, <laughs> that's a poo lover. <laughs> and, of course, that is Bukaki. Uh, <laughs> as well as the play centre, one thing you might learn about is a push present. A push present. I'd never heard of a push present before, but according to Wikipedia, a push present is a present a father gives to the mother to mark the occasion of her giving birth to their child. And it goes on to say that it is considered a nouveau riche practice in Britain. Now, I'm not sure if that's true. I, I know from my own experience that Wikipedia isn't always the most reliable source. Now, recently, I was looking myself up on Wikipedia, not in a horribly egotistical way. <laughs> Basically, somebody had asked me a question about myself, and I didn't know the answer. <laughs> and I, I, I thought that Wikipedia would, right? So, basically, someone said, oh, what year did you do such and such a thing in, right? So I'm, I'm trying to find this on my Wikipedia page. And what I found is that on my Wikipedia page, it says, Gorman took a break from stand-up to undertake a sponsored hitchhike around the Pacific Rim countries. And that is a thing that hasn't happened. <laughs> I'm pretty sure I would remember if I'd done that, obviously. It sounds quite nice, but I didn't do it. Now, I understand sometimes people vandalise Wikipedia pages for fun or for satirical effect. Like, recently, I saw on Bobby Davro's Wikipedia page that he was best known for his work as the inventor of Bovril, right? Now, <laughs> you know that's not true. You know someone's being funny, they're being silly, they're being satirical. You understand where that has come from. But in that case... It's not obvious where the satiric intent is. It's not absurd, it's not a dig at me, unless, unless hitching around the Pacific Rim is some kind of sexual innuendo that I've, <laughs> I've never heard of, and weirdly, now that I've just said that, it is. But, <laughs> but I thought, well, if I use Wikipedia as a reference, I'm sure other people do as well, so I googled my name and Pacific Rim and hitchhike just to see if I could find anyone repeating this fallacy as a truth. And I found this in the Northern Echo. And they were writing something nice about this show as it goes, but in there, they have repeated as a fact that I have hitchhiked around the Pacific Rim countries. And I, I haven't, but that's a, that's a Darlington newspaper with about 30,000 readers. That's 30,000 potential Darlingtonians who think I've actually done that. Now, I don't really know how Wikipedia works. I, I thought I'd mention it on Twitter, see if I could discover more. So I, I sent out a tweet basically saying, I've never hitchhiked around the Pacific Rim countries. I've just discovered that Wikipedia says I have, and so has at least one newspaper. And within five minutes, ten minutes, people were telling me about other places where it was being cited as a fact. Right? That is a radio interview website, and that's a, a Cambridge newspaper. Both of them have repeated the idea that I've hitchhiked around the Pacific Rim. Then I get a tweet from someone telling me that it has just been deleted. I assume he was the person who had deleted it. So I went to look at the page, and sure enough, it had been removed from my page. So I left it, I just moved on with my life. Except a couple of days later, Mrs Gorman alerted me to the fact that that fact had been reinstated. Someone's gone and put it back in. <laughs> but this time, this time, they've added a footnote. Someone's basically said, someone's taken my fact out. I'm going to put that back in. And I'm going to provide a reference so they can see I wasn't making it up. But you know where that reference takes you to? chasing a lie, chasing a lie around the world forevermore. And the more people who believe that, the truer it gets. At some point, I just start saying, I had a really great time. It was, <laughs> it was wonderful. Anyway, I think you can see why I wasn't in the mood to take Wikipedia at face value when it told me that a push present is considered a nouveau riche practice in this country. Because it doesn't chime with my own experience. 
You see, I found out about the push present from my in-laws. My mother-in-law was getting push presents from my father-in-law 30 or 40 years ago. And they're not nouveau or riche. They're from Cornwall. <laughs> I found out about it over dinner one night. Mrs Gorman was about four months pregnant. We're visiting her family. Everyone's very excited about the impending arrival. And over dinner, my mother-in-law says to her daughter, well, I hope Dave gives you a better push present than I got from your father. I'll never forgive him for that bloody vase. But my point is, I'm hearing this story and watching everyone around me laughing, and I'm just thinking, shit. <laughs> There's a thing called a push present. I now know about a thing called a push present, and when you find out about a thing called a push present, you are obliged to get a bloody push present, especially if you find out about it in the company of your wife. <laughs> just, just out of interest, I'm, I'm curious here. Could you put your hands up if you are a father? OK, a fair smattering of you. Can you keep your hands up if you bought a push present? <laughs> I'm, I'm the only bloody one! <laughs> I'm the only one who's bloody fallen for this. This information is like a virus. Once you've been told it, especially in the company of your partner, you are obliged to get it, which means I apologise to any expectant parents in the room whose lives I have just blighted <laughs> with this information.